Hey everybody, good old Terry here with an episode of Terry's Tips. Today we're going to talk about how to get this can into this bottle with no mess, no headache, no cleanup, well, a little bit of cleanup, but with uh, very little effort and very and uh, no mess whatsoever. Now you might be wondering why would I want to take this can and put it in this bottle? Well, let's visit our hero and see what's going on at his modeling bench. Wow, I sure have enjoyed building my one 350th F4E Phantom. That was a long two-piece build, but I think it looks good. Doggone, that shine is a little bit too bright for me. I'd like to flatten it. But I don't want to use this can of Mr. Super Clear and spray all over the bench and make a mess and waste all of it. Whatever shall I do? I know. Let's ask the guys on the modeling groups. Use your basic modeling skills. If it doesn't fight you, it's not really a model and you're just an assembler. Dude, broad, no matter how it turns out, it's going to be awesome, dude. My model, my way, and I don't need you to tell me nothing. Now, where's that cool picture of the rat? I do not build 350th scale aircraft. I think I'll just go over to Rebel Rooster Modeling on YouTube and see what good old Terry says. I think I got everybody on that one. <laughs> anyway, good old Terry says, don't sweat it. It's not that difficult. You might hear the words um, decant paint and it sounds really complicated, you know, like airbrushing <laughs> or something like that. Um, it's not hard at all. What you're going to need, whatever paint you're going to use, in my case, I'm going to be taking the old Mr. Super Clear with the UV cut. A jar you want to put it in. Uh, some tape. I'm going to use two types. You don't really have to, but this is what I do and it makes it easier and keeps it clean. I use a little bit of the fat tape and I use some of the skinny tape. And you'll need a, a knife. You might not need it. I just cut the sticky tack with it. It makes it easier. Speaking of which, uh, you'll also need some sticky tack, some blue tack, any of that stuff. Uh, some of you might have this and use it. Um, I just got this during the summer out here. Uh, problem is that out here in Hell's Armpit, uh, that is Phoenix, um, it's so darn hot out here, the stuff just flattens out as soon as I put it down. Instead of staying around, it just gets flat. So this might work. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Um, so I don't know if it'll work for this, but the sticky tack or blue tack, any of that stuff that keeps its form will do fine. And finally, a straw. Make sure it's that bendy type of straw. And I cut it out to about yay long. Um, after watching the video, you'll figure out if you want it longer or shorter. Um, and that's really all you're going to need. Let's get to the process and get it done. Okay, let's get to work, everybody. Don't forget to shake your can really good. Um, we're, like I said, we're going to be decanting the Mr. Super Clear flat with uh, the UV cut. We're going to put in this little extra jar here. Now what I'm going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the fat tape. We're going to cut two pieces. And we're going to put it over here like this to cover the top of the jar. All right. Just like it is. Piece cake. There we are. Now to make two holes here, I'm going to make one for it to breathe. A little tiny hole, and I'm going to make another one to receive the straw. And I find that just making a plus sign there does you just right. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top off of this bottle here, or can rather, set you aside, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut a piece of sticky tack. Not yet much. Take it off. And I'm going to roll it out. About this much. Just enough to get around that blue part. For those of you with rulers and slide 
the calculators, all that stuff. That's about an inch and a half, maybe a little less. And it's about, I'd say, a little between an eighth and a quarter of thickness here. Here's a hobby knife if you want reference, just about that thick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this around the outside of the blue part and let it overlap just a little bit. Make sure you don't cover the hole by accident now. That's all I'm gonna need. I'm gonna cut that little excess off. There we are. I got a nice circle around there, see? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the straw, and I'm gonna push the straw because the straw is slightly wider than the hole, you see? That straw is going to eat up into the plastic. I'm not sorry, the plastic, but the sticky tack. And that's going to create a nice seal to keep leaks from happening, see? Now, what I'm going to do with the skinny tape is I'm going to use that to secure the straw to the top because we're going to be bumping it around and it's going to try to get away from you. What I do is this. Wrap it around the back. And again over here to the front of it and then I get another piece to secure it really close to the sticky tack it's just you know this low tack uh, paint masking tape isn't going to stick very much and this is going to help it stay on better all right shake up that can one last time here now some of you might want to do this some of you ain't gonna bother but I do I like to put the the, the, uh, the paint up on a pedestal now you see how that is the straw is long enough to go down into it and then what I do is I get the straw I put it into the plus sign and then all you gotta do is squeeze and wait and you can see it's coming in there now some of you might want to lift it up you know, for whatever reason, I do it occasionally just to make sure it doesn't back up in the straw. And then stop. About, oh, I'd say about a third of the way. And here's why. And remember, this was under pressure and they got agents in the paint that make it fizz and all that other good stuff. But watch what happens here now. I'm going to take this here toothpick. And I'm going to stick it in there. Now you watch what happens. You see all that bubbling up going on in there? It doesn't look like much, but as you get closer to uh, the top, you get anything in there or you shake it up or anything, and that will really, really get foamy on the double and get up over the top and get away from you. So I just spray it a little bit, do it about a third, then spray a little more. Wait a little while. Now about the halfway mark, and that's as far as I'm gonna go for now. And then what I'm gonna do, you do this carefully while you hold the jar still. You shake this, it's gonna go, then you're gonna have a mess on your hands. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you again what this stuff does. You see it's fizzing here. Now watch what happens when I stick this toothpick in there. See that bubbling? Whoa, you see that try to get away from me? So what you can do I shouldn't say what you can do. What you really should do, keep the bugs and all that such out of it. Just put the lid on loosely and let it be. Let it be for a while. Probably what I do is I wait 30, 45 minutes, then I get that stir and stick and I, and I stir it around a little bit. Now, some people, they like to use these metal ones for all their stirring and everything. I kind of like to use the, uh, these wood ones instead because they've got all that fibrous uh, wood grain to it and that makes bubbles occur and that's gonna make it discharge its gases quicker. Just be careful how slowly you get that thing in there and move it around because that will foam up on you like you wouldn't believe. And I just repeat that, you know, throughout the day and then I go to bed with the lid on just sitting over it so nothing gets in there but, the, but it can't. you don't wanna close it because then you're gonna blow your glass out when, the, when it starts. Um, when the gases start to escape, I guarantee. So um, the next day, I just repeat the process again every 30, 45 minutes. Just go in there, agitate it a little bit. And then, you know, around the second day, you're going to have this to where it doesn't do anything. 
Here's some I did a couple days ago, and it's all good in there. It doesn't do any more gassing or anything like that, so um, I just put the lid on. But again, for the first couple few days, even after it stops doing that, put it on, but don't tighten it up too much because there's a little bit that's gonna stay in there later. But um, at this point, you're done. See that? Not a, no mess, nothing on my hands, but my fingerprints, and that's all there is to it. Decanting, sounds so difficult, but what a piece of cake. So there you have it, boys and girls. Piece of cake, nothing to it, no mess. I forgot to show you at the end. I'm just gonna make a little cut here along the tape, peel that straw right off, and look it. There you drop there, nothing. Totally clean. I just take the lid off and I give it a little lacquer thinner in and out to clean it out because I don't like when the uh, dried paint gets in there and messes with the pattern. But anyway, now this, uh, once it's all settled down, this is gonna be airbrush ready. A um, Couple ways you can use it. Um, some people like to just shoot it straight out like that with higher pressure. I like to thin it and run it through the airbrush like it was regular paint, which basically I guess it is, but uh, nothing to it. So now when you build your 1 350th scale F4 Phantom, you don't have to worry about using an ungodly amount of, of a flat spray or whatever you're going to put on it to make it work. Nothing to it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the videos, don't tell anybody. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again.